Hi, it's Jan from YouMakeItSimple.com. I love making things from upcycled wool sweaters. One of the first projects that I made with a wool sweater was a pair of cozy warm mittens. I loved how they felt on my hands. They were very easy to make and I'm going to show you how to make a pair of mittens from wool sweaters step by step, a very easy project to do. If you haven't enrolled in my previous class on how to felt and shrink down wool sweaters, I encourage you to do that. Then you will know how to get and um, acquire sweaters for projects. Not only sweater mittens, but other things that I'll be teaching as well. So I encourage you to enroll in that class if you haven't already. In the next section of the class, I will show you how to measure your hands correctly so that you can get the the perfect size and perfect fit. The items you'll need to make your mittens is the downloadable pattern cut out, a pair of paper scissors, a pair of fabric scissors, some straight pins, and six safety pins. You'll need your felted wool sweater pieces. Just make sure they're pretty consistent in weight and texture and you can mix it up and use different colors and you'll also need a, a piece of fleece you can use some recycled I like to use recycled sweatshirts that I have or a thin piece of cashmere sweater or another thin sweater you'll need for the cuffs of the mittens you'll need a, an existing cuff you can use the bottom portion of a sweater about four inches. You can also use an existing cuff of a sweater. So now that you have all your supplies gathered, let's get started. One of the first things you'll want to do is determine what size pattern you need to use. So you'll need to grab a measuring tape. If you don't have a measuring tape, you can wrap a string around your hand and then measure the string on a ruler. Otherwise, we're gonna take a measuring tape and wrap it around the biggest portion of your hand just below the fingers. So wrap that around and then bring your fingers in, kind of make a fist so it widens the widens the, the hand out a bit and measure how wide that is and then jot that down. That is the width measurement of your hand. Now we'll go ahead and measure the length of your fingers from the bend of your wrist Measure to the finger, the longest finger, middle finger, and determine what, how long that is and jot that down. That is the length measurement. Now you can go to your, your, the first page of your pattern piece and there will be a chart, a measuring chart, and determine what size that is and go ahead and start cutting out your pattern. Now that you've decided what colors of sweater is going to be what part of your mitten, let's go ahead and cut them out. So you'll take your pattern piece and lay it on the, the fabric. You decide which side you want to be the right or the wrong side. And if the sweater has a lot of stretch, you'll want to put the stretch on the width. There's a line there on the pattern and make sure that line is going on the stretch. Usually when you felt the sweaters, it has an evenly an even stretch to it or sometimes not a lot of, at all. Flip the pattern over once you've cut one out and pin it in place and then cut it out. If you don't flip the pattern, you'll have two pieces facing the same way. You need a left and a right. So the trick on how to keep those straight is to take a safety pin and pin it on the, the right side of the pattern piece. Take your other pieces and you want to make sure you maximize the sweater, the yardage of the sweater by getting as close to the edges as you can. If the print has a line, if the print has stripes or lines on it, you'll want to match up the notch 
with the stripe on the other piece. You don't really, it doesn't really matter if you're, um, these mittens can be kind of whimsy and um, sporadic in, in the way that you use the fabric, but if you're wanting to line things up and then go ahead and decide which side you want to be the, the outside and put a safety pin on top of it. The, if you want to maximize your time and you have the yardage of fabric to do just to flip it over and to double the fabric, that saves you a little time by cutting one piece, getting two pieces cut out at the same time. And that way you ensure that you have a, a left and a right just like you would have flipped the pattern. Go ahead and put your safety pins on. So now to cut the cuff pieces, you can take the bottom part of the sweater or use an existing sleeve cuff that you've cut from the sweater. Measure up four inches from the bottom edge and cut it off so it's four inches. If you want to use the bottom part of the sweater, the, the bottom ribbing edge, just go ahead and measure four inches up from the bottom edge and cut that. And the length of the cuff will be eight inches. So you measure eight inches and cut that. And you will need two of those and then you'll be ready to go. So either way works well, and then I'll show you how to, to make a seam and sew those together. Now do the same thing with your lining fabric, your fleece or your cashmere sweater or the, the thinner piece of fabric. Cut all your pieces out and make sure you have a right and a left side by applying your safety pins and you're ready to sew. There are just a few things to go over with the sewing machine before we get started. Just use a neutral color thread. Set your machine for a straight stitch and set the length somewhere between two and three. The seam allowance will be just at the edge of your presser foot. Bobbin thread will be just the same as your top thread. Go ahead and grab your pieces, two and three, and you've marked the, the right sides. Place the right sides together, the thumb pieces right sides together, and pin in place. Match up the notches on the side of the thumb piece, and that is where you'll be sewing to. So we'll sew around the thumb just in this section. Back stitch at the first of your seam and take your time to sew around the thumb piece, keeping the edge of the presser foot along the edge of the fabric. Sew until the, the place that you've marked with a pin, don't go past that and back stitch. Trim your threads. and trim the seam allowance just to take some of the bulk off, making sure not to cut through the seam. And just cut and trim to the edge of where you, or just where you stopped sewing. Take those pieces, now that you've sewed both of them, and open the top piece of the mitten open Place right sides together to the top piece, matching the notch by the thumb and pin in place. Pin the other side at the seam. And then the, take the center top and notice how the top, the bottom piece is a little bit bigger and that's how it's supposed to be to make a nice contour fit. It's designed that way and we'll just ease in the excess. Line up your notches pin in place, and then we'll be sewing all the way around, leaving the bottom portion open. Again, it's okay that that bottom piece is bigger, so just match up the, the top center and pin in place. 
and we'll take it to the machine and sew around. Once again, back stitch. Fold the thumb piece down towards the, towards the other side. So flip it down so that you can sew over that seam so it's out of the way. Take your time to sew around the corner, matching up the edges and easing in that bottom piece if you need to. Remove the pins as you sew. Continue to sew lining up the edges and back stitch at the end. Clip your strip, clip your threads. And once you've done that with both, we're going to have to go ahead and trim the edges again, the bulk, making sure not to cut through the seam. And we'll do the same thing with the lining pieces. But with the lining, you're going to make the seam allowance just a little bit bigger. So leaving just a little, like a quarter inch more on the seam allowance. Trim your seams. And now place the thumb piece on top of the palm pieces, right sides together, just like we did before. Now we're going to turn the, mitt, the outer mitten inside out, poking out the thumb and the top. Stick your fingers, stick your hand in there and poke out the, the, the seams with your fingers. Now remove the pins from the lining, but do not turn it inside out. Keep the wrong side out. Place your hand inside the lining with the, wrong, with the seams showing and stick it inside the outer mitten. Poke out the seams. To sew the cuff to the mitten, you can either use an existing cuff that you cut off the sleeve of a sweater, or you can make your own by using that eight inch strip that we cut off the bottom part of the sweater. Fold the cuff in half right sides together and mark with the, and pin it and we'll take it to the sewing machine. Sew down the side, back stitching at the beginning at the end of the seam and clip your threads. Turn the cuff inside out so the right side is facing out and fold in half and mark that halfway point from the seam with a pin. With the right side facing out of the cuff and the raw edges at the top, stick the cuff inside the mitten with the seam of the cuff facing the thumb seam of the mitten. Line up all three seams from all three layers and pin in place. Now go to the other halfway point where we marked with a pin and line that up with the other seam of the mitten. Again, line up all three layers and pin in place. So the cuff is going, you'll have a lot more excess of fabric from the cuff and that's okay. We'll just ease that and stretch that as we sew it. Go ahead and bring it to the sewing machine and using the edge of your sewing, the presser foot as your seam gauge, go ahead and sew back stitching at the beginning, taking your time to ease and stretch as you sew and to line up the layers of the fabric. So all edges are even and stretching and easing as you stitch. Take your time. Pull out your pins as you sew and back stitch at the end. Go ahead and clip that seam allowance. And this is the fun part. You're going to flip that over. Now depending on 
whether you want a the sleeve to come up higher on the arm or lower. So if you want it lower down, fold the cuff down lower or bring it up. I like it a little bit up on my arm and to hide that seam. And there you have it, a cozy, warm pair of mittens. You can embellish your mittens by embroidering a design or a flower or a, a button on the outside of your mitten. That will help stabilize the cuff from moving around or you can just leave them plain. I look forward to seeing the pictures that you post of your creative and fun and cozy mittens that you make. Have fun sewing.